today's lesson will be about the topic sentence. Today we're going to start our lesson by defining the topic sentence, then we will look at some examples of topic sentences, and then we will finally write some topic sentences of our own. Let's start on the note pages today so that we can begin our definition. Okay, so what is a topic sentence? If you watched the paragraphs video, you already know that a topic sentence I need to move my keyboard, excuse me. The topic sentence is the sentence in the paragraph that states the main idea. A topic sentence is made up of two parts. It needs to have the topic, what the paragraph is about, and it also needs to have a controlling idea. This is the specific, hmm, uh, this is the more specific component of the topic. Um, this is the specific purpose for writing about the topic. Okay, so a topic is a topic sentence, states the main idea, and a well-written topic sentence has a topic and a controlling idea. Let's look some, at some examples of some topic sentences for this idea to make a little bit more sense. So here are some example topic sentences. Today they're all about Harry Potter. Um, those of you who are in my class know that probably know that I'm a huge Harry Potter geek. Uh, so our first example here in number one says Harry Potter learns he's a wizard on his 11th birthday. So when we want to figure out what the topic is, it's just who or what this sentence or this paragraph is about. So in this case, the topic is Harry Potter. So I'm going to highlight the topic in yellow. And then, what about Harry Potter is this writer trying to tell us? That's the controlling idea. So, Harry Potter learns he's a wizard on his 11th birthday. That part, oops, oops sorry, my computer's doing all kinds of neat things. That part, which I'm going to highlight in blue, is the controlling idea. Let's look at another example. Known as a mean teacher, Severus Stape is not a favorite among Hogwarts students. So who is this sentence about? Well, the sentence is about Severus Snape. So Severus Snape is our topic. And what does the writer want to tell us about Severus Snape? That he is not a favorite among Hogwarts students and that he is known as a new teacher. So those two parts are our controlling idea. And then finally, this last example, Professor Dumbledore is brilliant, even though he seems silly sometimes. Well, who is this sentence about? This sentence is about Professor Dumbledore. So that's going to be our topic. And what does the writer want to tell us about Professor Dumbledore? That he's brilliant, even though he's silly. So that is our controlling idea. So now that we know what a topic sentence looks like, let's talk about where it goes in a paragraph. So I've jumped back to the note pages here to give you some ideas as to where you can put the topic sentence. As we will see, as my videos get more into essay writing, the number three comes up a lot in writing. There's usually three ways to do something or three parts to do something. And so here, there are three places to put a topic sentence in a paragraph. So the most common place is the first sentence. It's really easy to write if you start every paragraph with a topic sentence, and that is a perfectly acceptable method to employ all throughout your college education. When you put the topic sentence in the beginning, this allows the reader to immediately know what to expect. So the reader gets the topic sentence and then knows exactly what that paragraph is going to be about. This also, as we talked about in an earlier video about why it's important to write a paragraph, this also helps keep the writer focused. So the writer then is, is the writer is thinking and planning on the paragraph, is constantly staring at that topic sentence and then can remember exactly what he or she is specifically writing about. So let's look at an example of a paragraph that has the topic sentence as the first sentence. My paragraph examples today are coming from the Rochester Institute of Technologies Supporting English Acquisition website. And so here's an example. This paragraph says, 
Constructing a wedding, cake is, a wedding cake is a complicated process. Before any baking takes place, the size of the cake and the decorative, decorative design to be used must be determined. Then the layers are baked. On a large cake, the bottom layers may be as much as 16 inches in diameter. Because of their size, these layers must be baked one at a time, a process which may actually take an entire day. Once the layers are cooled, same size pairs are matched and frosted. Since large wedding cakes are surprisingly heavy, half inch dowel rods must be measured, cut, and carefully driven into the bottom layers. These wooden posts provide hidden support for the weighty upper layers. When all the layers are set in place, flowers, garlands, and leaves of frosting are added. These delicate touches individualize the wedding cake and transform it from merely a cake into a culinary work of art. So in this example, our topic sentence is highlighted for us in green. Constructing a wedding cake is a complicated process. If we were to analyze this topic sentence, the topic would be constructing a wedding cake, and the controlling idea would be that this is a complicated process. But our topic sentence at the beginning here lets the reader know that every other sentence in that paragraph is going to be about how complicated it is to construct a wedding cake. From a writer's perspective, this also helps the writer keep in mind that as, I'm, as he or she's writing every sentence, they all need to be about the process itself. So that's an example of a paragraph at the beginning of, I'm sorry, of a topic sentence at the beginning of a paragraph. Let's go back to our notes pages to see where else the topic sentence can go. Besides starting a paragraph with a topic sentence, you can also put a topic sentence at the end of the paragraph. Now, this creates a completely different type of paragraph. Here, instead of the reader knowing immediately what to expect, the writer can lead up to a main point. And this lets the writer be more persuasive. So let's look at an example now of a paragraph that has the topic sentence at the end. I'm back on the Rochester Institute of Technology supporting English acquisition website, and here is our example paragraph. People do it every day. They log on to their favorite website and browse for hours checking out bargains. They dump every possible wish into their shopping carts, knowing they can cast each one aside before they finalize their purchase. On the way, they may enter a sweepstakes in the hopes of winning a trip to Cabo San Lucas, or maybe even a new SUV. And then, when they have decided on their purchase, they enter private information without giving it any thought. With a keystroke, they release their personal data into what may or may not be a secure zone. Despite what much of the public believes, internet shopping is not safe. Alright, so in this example, again, our topic sentence is highlighted in green. So despite what much of the public believes, internet shopping is not safe. Our controlling idea here is, or our topic here is what the public believes, and then our controlling idea is internet shopping is not safe. Obviously, people do it every day it cannot be our topic sentence. It's way too general. It doesn't have a specific topic. It doesn't have what people do. So this paragraph is using a sort of little example of what happens as people shop online to lead up to the point that internet shopping may not be safe. This is more persuasive than starting the paragraph by saying internet shopping is not safe and then listing all the reasons why. This setup of putting that main point at the end allows the writer to give the reader a chance to really become interested and connect with the idea before stating the idea. So we've seen examples of paragraphs with topic sentences at the beginning and topic sentences at the end. So let's go back to our notes pages and see the third place the topic sentence can go. So the third place a topic sentence can go is the middle of the paragraph. But there are some hesitations and cautions you need to know if you ever decide to put your topic sentence in the middle of the paragraph. This only happens when the first couple, one or two or few sentences of the paragraph are used to introduce the topic. or when those beginning sentences are used to transition from another idea. Um, we're going to talk more about transitions in future videos. A transition is simply something that helps make your writing smooth and helps you move smoothly from one idea to another without it sounding choppy, like all of a sudden you're jumping to a new point. 
So you'd only put a topic sentence in the middle of a paragraph if you're introducing the topic or if you're transitioning from another idea. So let's go back to Rochester's Institute of Technology website and look at a third example of a paragraph. Okay, so here's our example. When a camera flash is used in a low light environment, the subject eyes may appear red in the finished photograph. What is known as red eye is the result of light from the flash reflecting off the pupils of the eyes. The phenomenon of red eye can be lessened by using the red eye reduction feature found on many SLR cameras. This feature activates a lamp which shines a small light directly into the subject's eyes. When this happens, the diameter of the pupil is reduced, thus tightening the opening in the iris. Since a smaller pupil means a smaller host for the reflection, the chances of red eye occurring are greatly reduced. So here's our topic sentence in green. The phenomenon of red eye can be lessened by using the red eye reduction feature found in many SLR cameras. The topic is lessening red eye, and the controlling idea is how to do that by using the red eye reduction feature. The reason that this topic sentence is in the middle of the paragraph is because in order for this paragraph to make sense to an audience who needs things explained maybe in layman's terms, the first two sentences need to be there to explain what red eye is. Those are not exactly related to the topic sentence because they're not about how to reduce red eye, but they're necessary for the sentence to make, for the paragraph to make sense. Everything that comes after this topic sentence explains how to reduce having red eyes in photos. Okay, that's it. That's uh, the basic definition of a topic sentence and where it should go in a paragraph. So to sum up, the topic sentence states the main idea of the paragraph and it contains two parts, the topic, what the paragraph is about, and a controlling idea, what the writer specifically wants to say about that topic. And the topic sentence can go in one of three places. It can be the first sentence to give the reader an immediate idea of what the paragraph will be about. It can go at the end, so the writer can lead up to a main point and therefore be more persuasive. Or it can go in the middle if you need some introductory or transitions before you state your topic sentence.